unmuted everything. So, yeah, if you just want to quickly introduce yourself, let everybody know what rank you are, etc., that'd be awesome. Okay, so I used to be master for four seasons, but this season because of placement and also the adjustment taking me 20 points every single game. I'm still in Diamond Tree, so it kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, I'm also the, oh, I mean, the role is of Laney, I mean of Laner, Meloflex or whatever. Yep. <laughs> and well, that's all. <laughs> okay, awesome. So far, this is an okay game to play blaze into because blaze does best against heavy melee compositions so you know you've got the uther is going to be melee range uh, anubarak is going to be melee range uh, muradin is also going to be melee range and kerrigan obviously the problem is late game scaling in the nazebo but at the same time nazebo does slow damage in team fights so again i really feel like all of these variables are fantastic for the blaze to play into at this point so draft wise this is a, this is a good time to play him Okay, okay. And like in general, Blaze, what does what does Blaze brings into the draft? Like He's actually um, a really strong laner. He's hard to gank because of that. As long as you're not playing crazy and pushing up really far in the lane, you shouldn't be able to die very often. And then as soon as you finish new habits, it's almost impossible for you to get ganked, right? You just hit that unstoppable on any engagements and you're completely fine. During the late game, he has an insane amount of sustain in team fights with all the healing. Um, and Bunker is just an incredible tool in general. You know, you drop Bunker, everybody can get in. They get the 25 armor. If you get the upgrade at level 20, which of course on this map it goes to 20 often, people get 50 armor when they exit Bunker. That is unbelievable. Yeah, about that. Uh... <laughs> Do you go Combustion? I... Yeah, I know. I went bunker, but I just realized about the 20 upgrade after that, this match because I was new to playing Blaze. So I was like, hmm, hmm 50 armor. Why yeah. Why I didn't took that talent, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very strong talent. So you mount up because you see everybody missing from mid. This is good. And they all show on top. You just don't want to push this in. That makes sense. Just playing safe. Um, but here's a little tip. So you're playing in a team environment, so you're allowed to do this. You're sitting here almost literally doing nothing. Yes, you get a little bit of XP, but you can actually, because the waves are coming in like this and this one's so low and all of them show top, you can take the conveyor belt mid and pick up this globe because you're just trying to stack your uh, level one talent. That globe you could have grabbed and then made it back down bottom without losing any XP. Oh, okay. That's a nice one. That's a... Nice one, actually. Just a good That's thing really to nice. think about. Yeah. Yeah. And that that can only really happen when you're soloing bottom side. What is this? Wow, He's... that's cool. <laughs> what is this? All right. Okay. But yeah, that can only really happen bottom side just because you can rotate up through the conveyor belt very quickly. The Blaze vs. Nazebo matchup. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but... Yeah, actually, I didn't play it too aggressive because I didn't want to give him the Toad stacks. Yeah. So I was just, like, avoiding. And also, something I've watched in Alex streams uh, is, like, just uh, let him push so it's easier for everyone to gank the Of course. Yeah. So I'm do doing that. Here, I do think you make a mistake, though, and we'll talk about it real quick. And it is, so right now, he's actually willing, because I believe if he walks up here, he'll get hit by towers. Yes, he will, if he walks right there. But you shouldn't just let him take this for free. You should, at this point, as soon as he willingly pushes this far up on the map, yes, your teammates are showing, and they're not showing, but they are not on the map. So, um, so that's, again, sketchy for him to walk up this close. Engage on him before he can walk up onto this. It's worth trading your health or even giving him a little bit of toad stacks if that's the case to get this globe because you're also looking at stacking yours. I seriously think it's worth contesting this. You can just E a little bit earlier, stop him in his tracks, boom, you get the neutral globe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And so I him. should be more aggressive on that one. Okay. Just right here, because if you E, there's no way you die. Like, look, everybody's all, everybody's showing on the map elsewhere. You just give a little bit of stacks on E, but I do think it's worth it considering how you deny the globe to Nazebo and you gain another one for yourself for stacking up your level one. 
Okay, okay. Duly noted. This one, not so much. It's a little bit more difficult to push in. Okay, okay. When it's obvious, I should really... Okay, yeah. Yeah, here I actually told them, you know, try to gank the Nasivo because he's really aggro. Yes. But I think they were... Sh I don't know. I think they showed in the map. That's why the Nasivo went back. Because if it was not because of that, I think the Nasivo would be still aggressive on me and we could have ganked him. So anyway. I want to show you something because... It's happened a couple times so far, so I'm just going to assume you don't know this. What you're doing here is you're standing in the lane because you are soaking it. You're on your mount because you don't want to get ganked, right? Even though you do see a lot of resources elsewhere, chances of you getting ganked very low. Did you know that you can do this without giving information? You can soak these minions without showing on the minion wave. You can stand here and get this experience. Because right now... Um, I know this is very min max, but this is why like, I want to go over these sort of things in the Patreon replays because this is very important as a solo laner. You do not need to be showing on the... Right now, you are gaining value only in one way. Very linear. You're gaining experience from the minion waves as they die to other minions. That is all you are doing here. So then why not do it without giving the information that you're bottom lane? Because... If in order for them to find out your bottom lane, they would have to tab and watch the XP contribution go up. Because they're like, Blaze is missing. Where is he? Oh, okay. 1840 XP. Oh, okay. 1900 XP. He must be safe soaking bottom. But that now puts the onus on your opponents in order to do that instead of you just giving them that information for free. Because you can stand right here and not be seen on the wave and still be soaking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That one. So something I got to work on then? Yep. Excellent. You let it clear the globe. Pick it up. Perfect. Yeah, now that you're fast clearing, it's different, right? Because yeah. yeah, I decided to already do that because of the objective, so... Yep. It's a good time to push in. And I think this is the, the start of, like, how could I be impactful on the team fights? Because, as I, I've said, like, with other heroes, I know how to be impactful, like landing a Sonya Spear or, yeah. you know, that tank with the Haka, something like that. But in teamfights with Blaze, it's really, really difficult for me to find, like, what to do to change the teamfight. Perfect. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll look at those. Here, I really do think you can step up a little bit more aggressively. They're showing resources top. Um, and you end up clearing this and then you give the globe away. So you can actually, you're allowed to walk up here. You got ETC, you got Malafurian. Again, it's fine if you take some damage from Nazebo. Yeah, we are trying to deny him stacks, but we can also be playing more proactively, pushing this wave in, getting this globe. Because you can actually... Uh, okay, you won't double globe off of it, but still, you miss the globe there, and they end up getting two. And they actually get the push on you. I don't think we should let them do that when we have three mid and they have two. But good choice. You only miss one wave to come bottom. Good. Fast clear. Do you know what your team's uh, decision here as a group was? Was it to, to contest the control point or was it to give it? Because right now you guys should be contesting, absolutely. They have Kerrigan showing yeah, on top. I think we just called Falstaff to come yep. uh, so we could engage. Perfect. I, we didn't want it to engage without Falstaff. Now we are doing it. But this is just like, uh, well, I didn't want it to be aggressive here because I was thinking, okay, they got Uther, so I just gonna poke, poke, and if ever they do something like diving hard, I would just like counter engage on them. Yeah. But if not, I would just let my DPS uh, do all the poking and I would just stay there because Uther cannot out heal us, right? In theory, I, if the fight lasts more than 10, 15 seconds, we should take the fight, yep. but I mean. They That's have no real damage. For. You guys, yeah, absolutely need to step up. So this is good. And control over this lane is very important. I love where Greymane is right now. This is fantastic. I also think it's worth dropping the... Um, the turret very soon. Because they're going to have to... Their comp, they're, they have to hard engage on you. So yeah, perfect. You set it up, but now you have to walk up. Just don't let free damage hit it. Free damage so far. Actually, actually, Grayman complained about that. Like, oh, they're clearing it for free. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys have to step up here for sure. 
Green main's playing very good here. This is excellent. We talk about it a lot, and I went over it in my last replay, but on these objectives, the team with the lane is the winning team a lot of the time. So Falstead goes up, but he's still got fly, so... This is what you want. You want Falstead to be able to clear this. You want them to be able to push, or have to push into you, and then Falstead flies onto the side, and then you guys win the fight there. Here I think like the ETC should be protecting yeah. the Grey main instead. The, I mean, in case they jump on him, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's the what should be the team plan. I here. think it's okay where ETC is, but I really do think you guys can do a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, because like they stack three over here, and we've got um, we've got Malfurion seven for the Kerrigan combo. So like this, this is a three man stun plus yours on the follow up. Big splash damage onto their backside. Like they literally can't get out of this route to follow up. Look at this play. This so here, here, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, so I should like retro here the attempt to to look for this opportunity, right? And then also me actually, <laughs> because yeah. we both like we're so passive right here. Yeah, when they stack up like this and they're showing Kerrigan in lane, absolutely look for this. This is a very, very dangerous... I can't believe Nazebo is allowed to step up to the halfway mark here. That's that's insane. When we have wave presence mid, that's crazy. ETC slide, um, and then your engage as well, plus five, plus the route to follow up. We've got the engage here, barrel roll down. Maybe it's the Q with boomerang. Big, big damage. Huge okay, damage. Okay. If they counter engage onto um, Greymane or Malfurion, we or sorry, if they counter engage onto Greymane, we've got uh, Nature's Cure. All of their engages stun. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. False dead back up. Okay, I want to look at this again. This, it just feels like your team isn't really on the same page here. Cause okay, Grayman has stepped up, he's doing some damage to the wave. Kerrigan just walks up and looks for a combo, stun, follow up, and then, okay, raw. It's definitely a lot easier. So you guys spent, you sent Falstad up to try to gain a little bit of an advantage, which I do like. But when that's the case, it's difficult for Greyman to just walk up into the Kerrigan like that. So Greyman could have been back here looking for damage off of your tank engages. And it would have been a lot better than having him in the mid lane like that. He gets raw W'd by Kerrigan, which is obviously a mistake on his part, but I really do think you guys are playing way too passively. You have the best engaged tank in the game on your team. There we go. There we go. See what I mean? Like literally, you guys can do so much off this combination. Check this out. Let's watch this again. And now let's consider we found this combination earlier when they had two people sitting mid lane, okay? Watch this. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got a 80% health, 15 armor Uther. Okay, missed combo. As soon as you see that missed combo, that's our time to shine. You get in there. You're looking for tap, you don't need it. Yeah, actually. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing there? Is yeah. that... Oh, damn. <laughs> so, pre-tap, I, I like the idea, but just considering the context of the fight at this point, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a misplay. Okay. Yeah, you get innervated here too, so this is good stuff. Look at this. Ooh, the missed combo. We are in there now. That's all they yeah, that have, dude. That is all they have. Now let's watch this Uther, okay? Slides Uther at 75% health. Boom, there's the slide. No boomerang even, and that's just the follow-up, and no roots, none of your damage. Can we imagine how substantial that engage would have been earlier on the three targets? You guys kill everyone. Yeah, actually. Good. Oh my yes, gosh, sir. no way. Good. Yeah. 
you're actually good to go here. You can stay here forever. Oh, no, 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 no. You are totally allowed to be here. I think at the, that was the point where my teammates were like, okay, I'm backing, I'm tapping, I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, when Grayman got cocked, I was like, okay, so I'm just out of here for a while. So right here, yeah, we like you are in a great spot. You've got pretty healthy mana pool. I'm not sure about the status of Innervate. Innervate's up. Innervate is up. We are ready to fight. I really do think backing out of this is a bit of a mistake. I think repositioning, perhaps. Maybe you could have you know, walked over here and looked on this side. But uh, what do we got? We got six seconds on ETC. They've got... Uh, I, I don't think they kill you. Okay, so they're... So in that moment, I should like the impact thing I would do with Blaze. Then it would be like baiting them, like baiting them into unleashing uh, everything to me, and then Falsa get them. Is that totally? Correct? Yeah, and look how close you guys were to level ten. So let's have another quick look at this. Um, you do very well. Like they have very low kill ch chance on you. They have very low kill pressure onto you. You can stay here forever and sit in your your fire and just stack up i don't know what's the status on your passive or your uh okay eight, 18 seconds left ish but this lowers in cooldown very quickly yeah i think you're absolutely allowed to stay here if false head doesn't help you with kills you can oil spill mid you guys get level 10 off of it okay you look for 10 on bottom side they got 75 percent. so this is is a safe play for sure but i do believe you're allowed to stay here Actually, like, yeah, I, I want the, not the platinum or diamond treatment. I want like the every single mistake. So this is yep. actually really great. Really, yep. really great. I absolutely believe this was your, your guys' objective. Just because of the nature of the situation, right? Three melee into a blaze with a healer and a fault. Ooh, I really think you're okay there. They all have to stack up because they're melee to kill you, right? That means that um, you're just getting constant healing by the moon fire. And you're healing by yourself, sitting on your fire like it's just good stuff for blaze now your team's coming in we do have flight again this is our fight them stacking up for this is pretty wild in my opinion yep really aggressive that's all you got to do i didn't even think about how busted bunker is against this comp it clears DOT damage. Actually, actually, we were talking about that. Like, in a, why didn't we use the bunker more often, like coordinated? Because yeah, of the totes and everything. Yeah, it clears that damage. Okay, we get two in it. That's good. Just take as many walls as you guys can. Okay, so the first one, then it should be like just walls, just like Dragon Knight, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Like, if if you think that if you think that getting a fort is going to be better for your style of comp, like if you think taking top fort and then having Falstead sit up there with your siege camps and maybe you can invade siege camp and really generate a lot of offlane pressure better than just the amount of XP taking all the walls gives you, then that's worth doing. But I think here just picking up walls is fantastic. It's going to push you guys to that 13 mark and allow you to make more plays in between the objective. Okay, so the the lane to pressure then it's uh, top right. I mean, this is a new map, understand? I haven't given a lot of talk on this one. Yes. But the top lane is the lane uh, that you pressure out with your global. It's like Dragon Dragonshire is bottom, so this is top. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You can absolutely take forts with it. It's just whether or not you guys feel it's useful. So I want to talk about something on this map real quick. I think this is Blaze's best map for a couple reasons. A, I think this objective is fantastic for Blaze. Lots of entry points, right? Lots of flank points for his um, jet propulsion and lots of areas where he can just safely be to, to use his oil spills. He can also zone very well with oil spills, right? Not igniting it. Uh, and the second thing about Blaze is the fact that this map doesn't have anything aside from the siege camp and the protector, obviously, where you can take and really force down a lane, except Bunker. Bunker is the best sieging tool ever on this map. If, so beforehand, 
if you get two kills on your opponents, you guys can't really push up onto a keep because it's just going to shred you to bits. But if you have Blaze on your team, you just walk up and bunker. It starts attacking the bunker. You guys get 25 armor right off of it. Now all the structures are attacking a 25 armor boosted heroes. Like 25 armor boosted heroes. It is such a fantastic tool to generate pressure off of one, off of two kills. You can bunker and take a fort. That's how fantastic this ultimate is. Okay, okay. And, and knowing that, I'm going to see if there's any opportunities that perhaps we miss because of the bunker plays. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, okay, okay. Like, here is just like laning again, I guess. Um, I don't know how Korean died there. <laughs> Completely missed it. Yeah, the, she gets ganked by the false dead. Oh, false dead flies down actually, but doesn't look like he. Okay. Um, when you have 13, the whole point on this map is to secure uh, the little mini objectives. So you take your fort camp, but the best one is support camp. So the fact that you guys are already contesting it is great. Oh. And like, there is like a question also I have in, in there, like, well, this is for later, but uh, the impacts like, okay, ATC is sliding, right? When players are out of position, what's like the um, thing that Blaze should look into? Uh, other than Bunker, of course. Counter-engaging, because they have an engaged comp themselves. You know, they their comp, their win condition is finding one of your squishier heroes, i.e. Greymane, Malfurion, or the Falstad in a Kerrigan combo at the same time as the Anubarak comes in and cocoons your support or Cocoon's one of the warriors. That's how they win fights, right? So what you want to do is find them on those engages. You want to counter engage with your jet propulsion. You want to WQ the Cocoon target to burn it to death. Okay, okay. Because you don't have a lot of burn. Do. You're the only hero in the ma on the map that can actually get rid of the Cocoon fast. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, excellent, because I didn't need any of that, so. There, there is something I should look into more. And right now, you just want to buy time for your false dad. False dad's doing a great job pressuring bottom. But you guys aren't really allowed to do it because of the gray main. That's okay. Not the end of the world. And both these teams are probably just going to pick up siege camps. See how fast that goes down with the burn? This was, he uh, he cocoons on top of the burn, so it kind of sucks for the Anubarak, but. Watch this, you light it up right as it comes out and it just instantly goes down. It's so <laughs> important to have this happen. Uh, yeah, that, I was lucky on that one actually. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. But do you see how powerful his counter engage potential is, right? You guys just won that exclusively off counter engage plus false dead fly in and wait, did false dead even fly in? No, he just uh oh. Uh oh, you're gonna see something bad there. Oh no. You're ready to cry. <laughs> did he have gust? Sixty second cool. Where did he gust? We gusted him into that spot, right? I think. Sorry. I know we're focusing on you, but I want to look at this. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. You're allowed. That's that's actually I was also like, what happened there? Gus in right there. Oh the last minion and wave, it's so rough. This is a free escape. He walked into the toad. Yeah. Alright, that's a that's a gnarly play on the uh, <laughs> on the Nazivo. We can't even get mad at that one. But uh Okay, watching this again. Okay, so 16, clear out this wave, good. It's fine because you have a death. Oh, and you guys actually decide to go down here. I do think that coming up is the smart play. I think uh, here someone called for me to double soak yeah. and then come up. So I just did that and then went to top. Yeah, I, I guess that is fine. If also, gonna... we don't have false set, so I was like, okay, okay. we wait for false set, then we 
there we go. If you're going to do that, clear another wave too. Because un unless you guys are looking to fight before they hit 16. But we'll see. Do you guys find it? If you do find the fight before 16, you should be heart engaged. Now, 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 now. Fight this guy. Fight him. Fight this guy. Slide anyone. Okay, <laughs> okay yeah. He's really reactive there. That, and that's something he needs to improve. But yeah. Um, and we can talk about this in our comms, okay? We can say, okay, Blaze is clearing bottom, but y you obviously were called up off the one wave, right? Because my assumption was you wanted to force a fight before 16. That's what this looks like to me. But then you guys get up here, and they're positioned at like the 70% mark on the wave, 65% mark. This is crazy. This is an absolute hard engage. Heck, you can even mosh this. They only have the Uther. Yeah, absolutely hard engage this. Or even, like, does Falstead have fly up? He's got fly and gust. Want to look at this one more time. Huge okay. misplay on your guys' side, I do believe. Right here. Yeah, yeah, actually. The flight can... Can the flight come in on the backside right now? Not quite yet. A little bit closer, but yeah, you guys can absolutely hard engage this fight he is not allowed to be here he is taking our globe when he's 15 Ooh, and his kerrigan was showing on mid lane Ooh, he's not allowed to do that this is a three-man mosh but you do get interrupted two different ways all i'm trying to say here is we needed to fight absolutely needed to fight totally totally agree with that now we just give him 16 for free. Oh, I didn't see that. Actually. I mean, might as well just have you bought him for another wave then, right? Like, yeah. If we're not hard engaging off that, that was actually, now that, I, now that we look at this, that was a fantastic rotation from you. You pick up the wave, you walk back up. You were up here when they had this much XP left. Kerrigan is showing on mid wave. They gave us a 16 to 15 fight and a numbers advantage fight. That is massive. Okay, but moving on. Also, like we're working on the synergy right now because yep. the team is freshly made. So I was, I was, for example, I was looking at that case scenario yep like falsat could just cost them into the corner and etc sliding into more speed that would be a great play but since you know it's it's of course a coordinated one already yep it's something we should really practice more often but absolutely yeah. yep we're gonna look at so far like because this is a team environment i do want to comment uh, on your teammates as well so when it would be very helpful helpful for you to show your teammates this like right here i i really do think we just slide this guy few reasons one we have perfect act like this slide gets etc here which is fine like that's that's a good slide right uh he, it's not like he's sliding here and he's absolutely in a lot of trouble he can slide just like this root follows up you're stunned off of it that's a boomerang that's a that's a uh a gray main engagement too like big damage here but we're just like letting like and he's just like we have every variable we want we got the turret we got the healing camp like this is I like think here, we're wasting a lot of, a lot of resources there, yeah. like using them. Actually. Totally, we just need more aggression. The fact that Greymane has stepped up here, but ETC isn't, it should be the opposite at this point, right? And then Greymane sees this, you see this, but we need ETC here. We need a slide here. At any rate, like we get a cleanse. The thing about cleanse on Uther is the fact that he needs to get into melee range to auto. Uther in melee range against an ETC Blaze. Okay, have fun. Right. Have fun. He's going to get absolutely destroyed if that happens. So burning cleanse is fantastic. And there's the cleanse. Boom, now we just reset. We have the sustain healer. Good, 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 good. Um, I, I, I missed there the, the burning of the cocoon. That yep. was actually my bad, actually. It's all good. Um, but you even said when we got into this that you weren't, like, that wasn't information that you knew. 
So because honestly, I feel really like new on Blaze. Yeah. Since it's a new hero and everything, it's almost like my if, but my if I don't think it's an offlaner, so I don't. Yeah. So just better aggression here. That's all. Good engage by you. You pop pretty much everything, but I really do think as soon as we get that cleanse, you guys just walk out and reset. You can walk back up here. Because they don't have cleanse, and the next CC lock that we do is game over. A death. Yep. Or a D shield. Or a D shield. I, I, I'm, I have a question. For example, in that where the Anubra was there alone, I don't know if what what's the correct choice for Ogremi to do. Uh, like. Should she go and uh, should he go and pop Wolf right away, or maybe wait for the cleanse and the divine shield first? In which situation? Sorry. Which spot right here? Is this what you mean? Like thirty seconds ago, there was a part where an Overac was uh, alone that yep. you. You said ETC could slide, and then everyone follow up because we had the turret and the healing camp. In that part, the what's your correct play for our agreement? Like wolf and get the kill, or just wait for the cleanse and the or the divine shield? Because maybe if he goes wolf, there would be like a counter engage, and he would be in a dangerous position. I don't know. I don't know. What always wolf. Honestly, always, always wolf. wolf because it gives you armor and it gives you mobility. Wolf against a Kerrigan comp is what you want. You can escape that sort of engagement very quickly. Um, I just wanted to touch on, because this is relevant, a couple questions. Uh, I, uh, Kala, question on the green main. Would you go Cursed Bullet here instead? Um, I do think Cursed Bullet could be really good here because you're playing against the cleanse. You find one stun Cursed Bullet combo, and they don't have a whole lot of sustain. So this green main can even just rip the Cursed Bullet just to get the chunk on enemy warriors i think cursed bullet would be better here okay okay against Uther, then would i'm not against the combo that we had yes I, yeah. I didn't see that actually yeah so yeah you guys like i really just think this is the biggest point you guys miss this so badly um and it's not just the etc like where is the where is the route to follow up the etc stun right he's out of range right now where's the the hammering to follow up off that like so your team is missing a lot of cohesion and a lot of synergy. And mainly, I feel like it's with the front line so far. Okay, so there is the follow-up there. That was good, but there's no roots. Root is a big part of your guys' uh, trade. And yeah, we don't get the... Uh, we don't get the burn, unfortunately. And I checked your cooldowns. You did have it there. So you'll know that for next time, though. <laughs> Next time you will not see. But I really like, oh, that, that was really fun. Did you see that the two guys walking to the mush? I was like, yeah, oh. it's pretty. <laughs> um, but I do feel like a lot of this conversation isn't irrelevant, but we shouldn't have to have it just because of the nature of the situation before the level fifteen when they were pushed up so far. That was absolutely unacceptable that we didn't engage on that. So you should show your teammates that for sure. Huge plays could have been made. Okay. Yeah, actually. I think Actually, here I, I was like Grayman a bit more aggressive because they don't have any damage. So yeah. you should just be back in them all the time. I do think Grayman is a good player on your team. He seems. What's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing good stuff. Your team actually has the potential to be pretty deadly. I also, oh, okay, just go Google. Oh, I was just saying the style of draft works really well on this map. Uh, I like the way that you guys are, you're not missing a lot of soak, right? You're, you, you made, honestly, like, I know it seems kind of simple, but the fact that they sent down Blaze uh, and then you immediately came back up, yes, you guys missed the engagement, but like plays like that are, are really strong plays. So you guys take top four, you take mid four, and this is the time, this is kind of why I do like to say picking up the 
ta or picking up the walls during the early game is smarter because the whole point is to get yourself that talent tier advantage, right? If you're able to pick up all the walls and then the next shrine spawns on the 10 to 13 sort of marker, right? And you're able to hit 13 and you can take the next protector, that means you have two open forts, maybe even three open forts available to you. Perhaps you can take two forts with the next protector and then you're on your way to the 16 to 13 mark. Maybe you get the 20 to 16 mark and then that gets you a keep off of it, right? Like you have to think about what taking these walls gets you in the long term. So here's perfect example. You guys took top wall, you took mid wall with the protector and now you take top fort and mid fort and look at this experience um, difference so far. And yeah, of course, you have the global. Yes, you have the kill advantage as well, but it's still just worth pointing out. Okay, excellent. I also like have a question. Like, for example, um, tank should um, call the cooldowns and stuff during a team play. But what about the other? Uh, and of course, the focus, right? The initiation. Who's gonna be the target that we're gonna initiate into? But what about the DPS? What about the healers? What should they do in, during the team fight in terms of communication? Um, so part of what you just said is correct. You said that the the warriors should be talking about their cooldowns and when they're looking to make an engage. But the target, I don't think, is as important as worth flooding communication saying. So example, if ETC saying saying, okay, I'm I'm positioning up in this bush, I'm looking for a slide. He, who he slides doesn't matter. It does matter, but that information isn't relevant, right? Like, if he slides a target, the DPS still have to follow up. Um, and if you guys end up wiping off of that, then you can look at it in, in the replay after and be like, okay, ETC saw the Murden slide walk up. Everybody else was hidden. I think Murden was just baiting out the slide, and then they turned onto ETC and killed ETC. So the target doesn't matter in that context, but all that matters up is all that matters is the follow up. And for supports during team fights. They should be calling out when their heals are coming up next. I always hear, hear June saying it. I have heal in one second, heal in two seconds. Um, whether or not the support has cleanse up and whether or not they have their heroic up. Those are the big ones. Okay. And for the uh, DPS, there is like, is there something they should be doing in the, during the communication, during the team fight? Yep. Um, if the DPS find a mispositioning on the enemy... Um, and they they switch focus, then they should call that. It's not always just up to the warrior to call um, targets within team fights. Like, yeah, they can call engagements and they can look for big engages, but like, you know, like, what if right off of this? Okay, bad example. Okay, let's see if I can find a different one. Uh, what if right off of this? Hypothetically, I don't think this should ever happen in this scenario. What if off of this, Greyman Qs and Es and then switches target onto Nazebo, and Nazebo at this point is only like 20% health. He should be saying that. He should say, I need help, I'm on Nazebo. Because Nazebo is at this point 20% health. Greyman's trying to get an extra kill. Maybe he has the reset and go for the throat. And he needs the ETC to slide in order to allow Greyman to get those kills. So the DPS actually talking about what targets they're on and, okay, he does Ian, but like the DPS talking about what targets they're on and um, the relative danger they're in for being on those targets is very important, very, very important because tanks need to be able to um, peel for their damage dealers during team fights. And the tank doesn't have all the time to look at the dangers of each individual hero at all times. It's important that you feed that information to your warriors so they can play accordingly. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's what I needed. <laughs> Thank you so much on that one. And there it ends when we lose the, the we lose everything. Yeah, this is the... yeah. You lose here? Okay. Yeah, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. Uh, you will. You will find that surprising, but we're gonna lose that one. Off two ganks actually. So, so just... um, I want to ask you a question. I want to see where you're at. I'm pretty sure you'll you'll nail this one. So, you guys have level 20. They have one dead, right? Okay. Can yeah. they contest you top? No, actually, I was like, let's get something with the 20, right? Let's get the keep. We have bunker. Okay, perfect. Like... So then what is the only play of the enemy team? What is the only thing they can do to salvage this? 
Well, if they see Falstad there, they would get for they would get the Falstad or try to get the Falstad. Absolutely, Falstad just used Gust in the team fight moments ago, and look at the information on the map. Falstad is pushing up on this wave with no Gust. Um, level twenty advantage, sure. Yeah, maybe he has a flight, but you're playing flight into how many forms of CC? If a Nubarak shows up and the, and the flight starts getting channeled, he's just gonna rip cocoon on you and kill you off of it. No big deal. They they'll spend a heroic for that. That's huge death timers. So. Your false head is never, ever allowed to be here. He has to stay here, here. Wait for enemies to show top, show mid, show somewhere before he's allowed to step up onto this wave. Also, what does this get you guys? Nothing. You already have level 20. False dead honestly should be up here with you guys. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> that's, that's the big misplay actually that happens yep. to us. The reason why we lost that one. And there we go. Yeah. Can you even play this? Yeah. Can't even play it. Um, buys you guys some time, but you had this time bought for you already. You had the kill on Kerrigan. You have the level 20. This time was yours. You're allowed to do this. You guys can now just walk up. You literally bunker. You have the healing. Uh, you're. Yep. Perfect. You guys get it anyways, but you would have gotten so much more off of it. This is so stupid. Do you guys see what I mean? How ridiculous this heroic is on this map? You guys don't even get this. Oh, it is huge. It's way bigger than I thought it was. You guys die here. No! <laughs> we had Gust too. Oh, I'm pissed actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it happened. <laughs> okay, I know you've obviously watched videos of or sorry um coaching streams before but do you remember how often i say it's a huge problem when teams they're allowed to take something okay your team has a kill you have level 20 against 18 you're allowed to take this keep right you have all this information um you guys are absolutely allowed to step up here the only thing you're not allowed to do is take everything on the map you're not allowed to push up without information bottom with your false dad when everybody's missing you're not allowed to take two keeps you're allowed one keep that's it. And that's all we want, right? They have no global. They have to send their Nazebo or their Kerrigan in order to clear this. We have the global. We can take a siege camp and pressure keep, or sorry, core. But the fact that you guys have this and then you try to take more from your opponents literally loses you the game. Okay, excellent. Because it's also like something, uh, macro is obviously the hardest thing to do. And I think, okay, mechanically, there is stuff that we need to practice, especially synergy and focus. But about macro, that's that's the thing that you don't learn uh, every day. And that that's actually something uh, I, I also not, didn't know. So it, it's good to know that, <laughs> that kind yep. of misplays by our team. So what you guys did was OK. I think it would have been smarter for Falstad to actually position safely mid and just look at, you know, clearing out menu waves, but honestly, it's so irrelevant because all you guys needed to do there was get a keep. Falstead taking bottom fort literally does nothing except for it gives you a tiny bit more push pressure if perhaps the game stalls out to... Okay, wait, I am so upset, right? Not like... Okay, hold on, let me recenter myself. So, few massive things here. Next objective is bottom lane. What does that mean? If we have top keep gone, that means that the enemy has to literally go on a journey around the world in order to clear the wave. They have to go so far away from the team fight in a team that doesn't have a global in order to clear this wave. So all we do, okay, all we do off that play, we have the kill on Kerrigan, we have a level 20 advantage, we take keep, we back up, we cap our siege, we do not, or sorry, we, we kill our siege, we do not cap it. We put one warrior positioned here for the engage. We put one warrior positioned here so that they can't just like try to get XP mid, that's it. And then we literally wait. We don't care if they get level 20, not a big deal. Because we have Siege Camp pushing top, we have Catapults pushing top. We we take that, we pressure out mid wave, we can pressure out bottom wave a little bit. Our fort would still be up because we wouldn't have died, okay? And now we just wait. We literally just wait. Yes, they, because if you're the enemy team at this point, you're like, holy crap, we have a Siege Camp and Catapults pushing top. We have to make a play bottom, we have to hard engage on them, we have to win a fight or we lose this game. Uh. My team, us, we just play safe, right? We have the gust. It's a, 
you know, in, in case maybe one of us accidentally steps up a little bit too far, we have the gust to just gust them away. We reset the fight, but all we do is wait for this to push in. They have to send somebody back. Then we move in. Game's over. Yeah, it was almost a checkmate, right? Yep. <laughs> Gosh, when you get a keep on this map with a global against no global, it is very, very obnoxious. Yeah, because we could actually also sit fall side and top and get the pressure going, right? Yes. Yeah, you can send up for a wave or two, you know, as soon... But, of course, only when resources <coughs> show. If Kerrigan and Uther are here and Anubarak shows bottom, sure. Yeah, fall can walk up and queue the wave once. That's fine. And then he walks back. Just plays it safe. You know, three more people show elsewhere. Yeah, he walks off for another wave. That's fine. And then he starts rotating safely. You know, he starts getting into these bushes where he can actually fly bottom for the fight. Ooh, big plays for our team off of that, but we messed it up. Okay, okay. Duly noted that one also. Again, just not allowed to show. You're not allowed to be anywhere when they're not showing on the on the map. Against a pick comp, so. Where did they last show? It's all really good. I love this replay. This is great. Let's have a look. So they cap their camp so we know their bottom side and then they're not showing on the map there we the cap the camp bottom side not showing on the map we clear the wave can't even be there yet and he realizes it but then he walks up nope fair enough well you're not telling me you guys just straight lose off this push do you I'm about to tell you otherwise. <laughs> that was a... Yeah. Yeah, that was a silly game. Actually, we won the other two, but... This one we lost. Because of silly plays like that. I think we had the whole game. And then we did those kind of silly things. The reason I wanted like to show this uh, replay was... Well, first of all, it was like a team game, so... I want to know what could we do as a team to improve, which is obviously synergy, focus, and macro, actually. Mm -hmm. And second one, what could I do to place to like uh, help improve the team? But I think my place wasn't like bad, but maybe missing out some aggro plays that I should be doing, or counter engages, or the burn thing that I just uh, learned quite earlier. Yeah, stuff like that that I really needed to know. Um, your your lane was quite good. The one thing we talked about or a bunch of things we talked about but uh the one where you were just standing and showing on the wave for no reason you can position a little bit more to the right in order to get that soak as well um i think you could have played a lot more aggressively in a, in a bunch of these situations did you even die once this game? i think you died once right yeah you died once and that wasn't just like a full-out team fight so that's fine that you die like that Personally, I think you should be jumping into Hero League as Blaze and just testing your limits a little bit more because by the looks of it, you, you're you not quite there with the knowledge of his limits. So, perfect example. You had a support, three melee, and a fall stat, and you walked away from that fight instead of fighting mid, and I really do think you guys can win that mid, and very easily, too, just because of the, you know, the strength of Blaze against melee compositions. That's where he shines. Um what was the other stuff? And then, yeah, just as a team, you guys need to be playing way more aggressively. This top fight was a huge one, you know? That was actually the big swing in this game. Um, actually, not the big swing. This was a moment where you guys can snowball so hard. They positioned so poorly. You had the 16 advantage. You had the numbers advantage. And you guys didn't look for the fight. So this was a big misplay. And then, obviously, we went over very in-depth this keep play and how you play off of this keep in order to secure the win. So um, I think, personally... You, as a Blaze player, you played quite well in most cases. But the best way for you to get better, just roll him in a whole lot of Hero League and test your limits with this hero. Build is good. Um, except, I think, on the Next 20... The yeah. <laughs> I do think it's the bunker upgrade here. It's so insane, man. 50 armor coming out of it is just unbelievably powerful. Um, the Fuel Leak is... You can have a look at Fuel Leak as well. What was the other 13 that I think is better than Fuel Leak? Let me look. I guess I could just look right here. 
is either the spell reduction with the Q or the AA reduction with the oil yes. and the fire. This looks like a spell reduction game to me. A lot of spell damage. Spell damage off combo. Spell damage here almost exclusively. It could be good. Uh, what does this actually bring? Not a whole lot of value to the fights. Uh, just worth considering. I don't think that... Uh, obviously not the focus here. But yeah, just something worth considering. A question, uh, actually, a other question about build would be... Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Alex uh, plays, plays differently. I've seen him going with the... Uh, what's this? Incinerator the gauntlets? No, with the... Uh, yeah, the speed on, on one. The speed and the attack speed also. Oh, yeah, yeah. The seven is the uh, the auto attack one. Yeah, the one that is more in the minions and stuff. When should I go for that build? Or is it even good? Because I don't know. That I wish I could give you more information about that. I personally haven't looked into it enough to be able to tell you honestly, but I will do that. It's part of kind of the Patreon thing is I want to be able to give you all of these questions that you have answers. So I am going to write that down one sec and then i will get back to you with that one so and um, another one if i may have oh, another of course one. <laughs> um i saw breeze also taking maybe testing the bigger oil and this low yeah is that good yes is in any scenario and yes which scenario is that um honestly a lot of the time i do see some people going adhesive petroleum and i think it could be pretty good on this map just because of you know the amount of control it provides but i think in most cases like honestly 90 percent of the time you should be going the increased size okay um Especially, 90 percent of the time yeah like and and here the size gains a lot of value because you're hitting multiple targets and they're all in melee range right like it's just and then of course it allows you to get more value off your 16 too because i'm uh, sorry you're um not your 16 you get more value off of your um just healing off of it because you can stay in more positions where you're getting healing than not okay because like here i thought that with the um oil and the melee composition that they had it would be better to just incinerate healing myself and also slowing them than actually just uh lay the lay the oil just to slow them or incinerating it but not slowing them I, I thought like okay maybe i can bring a little more control if i um and I, I mean i thought it was more uh synergistic into their composition to just stand in the fire while, while they're also taking damage because they're all melee but I, I i don't know like maybe i got it all wrong like so the 90 percent i mean the, the i'm sorry the area increase is better for melee compositions and then the ignition when it's better in what, in what cases? Because I don't know. I think I have it wrong then. Hmm, like that, that's a good that, that talent. Yeah, like, adhesive petroleum. It's a tough one because they both gain value with melee comps, right? Because they're going to be grouped up on this one and slowed by 30%. But the alternative is they are affected by your wq combo more often because of the increased area so they both provide value here that's not the question the question is why the other talent over this one why the increased area over the increased slow what does the increased slow do for you they have a jump stun they have a jump stun they have a long range engage they have someone who doesn't get affected by it. That's kind of the way that I'm looking at it right now. Because the slow, while it's great once the fight has already broken out, kind of, they all have ways of getting out of it. So it's kind of like a moot point because they they can all just get out of that slow. The slow doesn't matter, but the increased area will matter because it's going to be hitting them more frequently that's kind of the way that oh. i'm looking at this right because yeah, they can yeah, always yeah. get out of that slow they they really can there's nothing about it that will keep them in that slow unless of course like you just use it on top of them when they have already engaged but then is that slow actually securing you kills or is the increased size better i that's just the way i'm looking at it i i just feel yeah. like while this is good the other one is slightly better 
just because of the nature of, and, and this happens for a lot of melee comps, right? I can't think of a single melee hero except for like Thrall that doesn't have some way of removing that slow. And maybe Arthas. And Arthas, yeah, exactly. Might be better against those specific heroes, but these heroes in particular, in particular, have a way of escaping that. Okay, excellent. So that's the ninety percent. Yeah, I, I got it. That actually makes a lot of, a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna write this one down too, just to bring a little bit more conviction to that decision. So we've got adhesive petroleum. Okay. I will get back to you with just better answers on those ones, but that's kind of where I'm at so far, because I want you to, I want you to be completely convinced when I give you an answer like that. So we kind of discussed it and went over why we would think about which talents we would take. But I, I, that's that's kind of the decision I'm coming to. But I will get back to you personally with better answers to those questions. Excellent. Thank you, fam. Thank awesome. you for uh, for this one. I, uh, I will practice a lot of plays and hopefully. The next one will be better. <laughs> Heck yeah, I like it. Um, I just wanted to personally thank you for uh, the support with the the Patreon. I seriously uh, really appreciate it. it. Means the world to me, and I'm glad that we can do these replays and you can get a lot of value out of it. Thank you, fam. The I'm goal is to reach Grandmaster, so <laughs> let's go. For a while. <laughs> right on. I'm excited for our next one this month, so I will see you again shortly. Okay, excellent. Um, have a nice night. Um, you too.